All right, so we're going to jump straight into the first activity. There are a couple of uh, people um, that we're waiting for, and hopefully will join us. So to start things off, uh, we'll do a little warmer. And this warmer was inspired from an activity from the book. We are going to be talking about Challenge to Think, which is an excellent uh, teacher resource full of activities and ideas. And uh, it's also appropriately named. There's uh, definitely a focus on uh, critical thinking skills. And the activities are very challenging, not only in the lesson format, but also the content and what is asked of the, the students as well. So it's a pretty good book to, to, um, to have a look at. And now, one of the reasons why I wanted to start with this activity is another great thing about the book is that you can take things off the page really easily. So you don't necessarily have to do the activities exactly as they're written on the page, but there's such um, wonderful creative ideas that will hopefully spark your own uh, imagination and add your own kind of dimension to things. So, for example, this one here is a pattern finding uh, and reasoning activity. And as you can see, I've got six images, that just very random images. And the task is to try and come up with a connection between the minimum of three of these things that could perhaps begin a story or a part of a story, but in one sentence. It could be a rambly sentence. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect sentence. But um, what do you think, Tyson? How would you, uh, how would you connect three of these things? Hmm that you're looking at on, on the screen. Well, I am being drawn to the dog. <coughs> so <laughs> I imagine we all, either in pity or humor, are yeah. drawn to the dog. <laughs> so, so the first thing that comes to my mind really is, uh, for example, uh, I came home one day and my dog had uh, gotten into the groceries oh. and he had it, this paper bag stuck on his head <laughs> and he couldn't see and he was trying to get out of it. I panicked a little bit, and so did he. He seemed like he was panicking a little bit. So I, I found some scissors, and I thought, hey, you know, this would be fun. I'm going to cut some holes and, and a space for his nose. <laughs> <laughs> While it's on his head. <laughs> yeah, a little dangerous. <laughs> that is one sedate dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Rocco's really good like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He'll let me do so anything. So basically, uh, yeah, I came home. I found him with a grocery bag on his head. He was panicking, so I cut some holes and and made right. it able for him to breathe. <laughs> That's great. That's three. Excellent. Okay. What about anybody else? Because anybody else, you've been staring at that screen with those pictures for at least a minute or two. Can anybody connect any three of those or more? If you can connect all five or six, rather, then that's, uh, that's really impressive. Just write your sentence, type your sentence in the uh, question box if you can connect any of those three in a sentence or two, and we can share that with uh, everybody. I don't know how to incorporate that feather duster. Well, there was dust on the bag, so I was dusting it off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see the jewels in the treasure map, hmm. and I can hear you guys thinking. Hmm. See if there's any, any sentence that you can, can create. It can be more than one sentence. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. And also, you can, uh, you, can set, uh, you can set it as, you know, different from... Uh, okay, so we've got Denise is saying the antique treasure map needed some dusting off to locate the whereabouts of the gemstone. Brilliant. That's fantastic. And all in one sentence, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, what, that is a beautiful sentence, yeah, no kidding. I have to say. Excellent. All right, Sharon's contributing here. I've got half of what she's saying. Let's see. She says, I dusted the jewels and placed them where I thought they should be on the map. Ah, very good. Excellent. Okay, we got some great, uh, great responses. So, the the idea here is to to get people thinking, and lots of times it's nice to get away from the written word. Images generate a lot of, uh, you know, past experiences, other connections to things and allow students to connect to things, uh, to make connections really easily. So I do quite like the idea of the, the fact that they're pictures and not just the, the actual printed word. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another one. Oh, excellent. Ada. 
I think my my. We just have to widen it a little bit. I kind of I widened it a lot. Well, I'll read. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I found a very old dusty map, and I used the duster to clean it. I panicked when I couldn't fix uh, X <laughs> or find X. Find the X. <laughs> Sorry, Ada. <laughs> that uh, I panicked when I couldn't find X that marked the spot where you could find the diamonds. Wow. Mm. That's excellent. Very good. Yeah, that is really, really nice. Okay, all right, so this is one of the very first activities from the book. And so let's have a look at a couple more. Oh, hang on. Wow, I have to, I have to read out to Mary Therese's here. The Intrepid Dog Detective. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. Obviously in disguise. Mm -hmm is planning on riding the Feather Duster to Treasure Island since his broom is in the shop. <laughs> he will use the map to dig for jewels and keep the panic button close by in case some pirates show up. Wow, congratulations. That's fantastic. That's That was all but, the, all but the scissors. All but the scissors, yeah. yeah. And in haste, he cut up the scissors, or he cut up the map. Yes, that's right, because he spied a pirate <laughs> mm. and chopped the, scissors, chopped the map up with the scissors, having already memorized where the X is. See the stories you can come up with. That's excellent. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Those are really, really great ideas. Okay, so let's go on to the idea of challenge. As I said, the, uh, the title of the book is actually quite important, too. And, but I want to take a minute to, to think about what challenge actually means. Most of the time in our industry, they mean things like uh, crashes level I plus one, uh, meaning that the language input or what the teacher brings to the class needs to be just that higher than the language ability of the students. Now, we also talk about challenge when we discuss different teaching frameworks. For example, grammar taught in the PPP framework is seen as less challenging than test each test or task-based because in PPP there really is less opportunity for students to make mistakes. Now with this book, the majority of the activities are essentially task-based, which does definitely increase the level of challenge. But we're also looking at challenge in a different light here. Uh, challenging our students through the context we give and the demand on these three different things. 